Well, first, let's open up with thank you. From the bottom of my heart, truly. When I uploaded my last video summarizing and explaining Sony's GDC reveal, I had no idea it was going to do as well as it had. I remember rendering the video out and thinking to myself that I would be happy if this one got 100 views. And at the time of finalizing this script, it's at 45.2K. For someone like me who's been doing YouTube for nine months and only had 300 subs before uploading it, that video just blew me away. So thank you yes you for watching and i'd like to formally welcome you to the channel my name's innocence and i make gaming content ranging from explanations commentaries live commentaries essays reviews and anything that comes to mind but all the formal stuff aside this video is going to be about flops and not the kind of flops that james harden does but computational capability yeah that's right we're going to be talking about arguably the most used fanboy ammunition in internet debates about which console is better teraflops and as the title suggests i am currently enrolled in university for computer engineering and today i'm going to attempt to simplify and explain the concept of teraflops to you and give my two cents on the matter so let's jump straight into it okay teraflops it's admittedly a pretty weird looking word but for the first part of this video we're going to focus on the terra part only and save the flops part for later so that's right for the time being throw the flops part completely out of your mind and do not worry about it we're going to focus solely on the terra part and provide a definition for that first before moving on to the flops part Okay, so Terra. I'm sure you guys have seen it in front of other words like terabyte, maybe terahertz, or even terawatt. And the reason it's capable of going in front of so many words is because it's simply a prefix representing one trillion. Meaning, if you put Terra in front of anything, you are simply referring to one trillion of that thing. So in all technicality, one Terra sheep refers to one trillion sheep, just like a Terra flop would simply refer to one trillion flops. But in case you guys don't believe me, here's the full line of numerical prefixes for clarity. I'm sure you guys are used to seeing the prefixes like milli, micro, nano, mega, kilo, and even giga and that's because you use them in your everyday life today well unless you live in the u.s where the imperial measurement system is still used but honestly in engineering class we just kind of pretend we're somewhere else but yeah if you've ever heard of a kilometer or kilometer they're just referring to 1000 meters a centimeter is one hundredth of a meter a nanosecond is one billionth of a second and a gigabyte is a billion bytes that all just goes to show that the terra and teraflop really means nothing and just represents one trillion flops so if the xbox series x has 12 teraflops of graphical power that just means 12 trillion flops and if the ps5 has 10.3 teraflops that means 10 trillion 300 billion flops or 10.3 trillion flops and that's honestly it for the prefix terra consider yourself certified in not knowing that it means absolutely nothing in terms of computation in its own right but now we come to the real beast the flop part and um i just want to preface this by saying that what's about to come is really really complicated but relax oversimplifying has not failed me yet so i'm not gonna bore nor confuse you guys with all the details in fact i'm going to be simplifying quite a bit while still trying to paint the entire picture so you know exactly what's going on but if you are someone who wants more details or perhaps knows about this stuff like myself and would like to have a more detailed conversation just drop a comment and i'll be glad to have one with you okay so flop it technically means floating point operation per second, but what exactly is a floating point operation? Well, before we can understand what a floating point operation is, we need to first understand what a bit is. And bits are pretty simple. The word itself actually stands for a binary integer and binary simply means two, representing the two states a bit can have, either zero or one. So you might be like, if a bit is just a zero or a one, what does that mean physically, like in the real world? Well, that's kind of complicated, so I'm not gonna get super into it, but a good way to visualize it is to simply think of a bit as an electrical current going through a device that can hold information. As in, this device, and its name doesn't matter, can remember whether or not it had a current going through it and tell the computer accordingly. If there was a current, the device remembers that and tells the computer that a one has occurred, and if there was no current, the device will tell the computer that a zero has occurred. And that's pretty much all bits are, just pieces of electrical information that your computer can interpret as either a zero or a one. So now you ask, okay innocence, we know what bits are, so what does that have to do with flops? And my answer to that is relax, relax, we're getting there, but we actually need to establish one more thing about bits before explaining flops. And that's the fact that bits can be combined, and you might be like, what does that even mean? Just bear with me, it's simpler than it sounds. Remember that bits are just little devices that can interpret an electrical signal or lack thereof as a zero or a one. But I half lied to you when I said that, and the reason I say half is because each individual bit can be a zero or a one, but when you combine them, you could actually represent more numbers. For example, if you have two bits next to each other, there are now four possible states they can be in, either 00, 01, 10, or 11, and your computer will essentially interpret these extra states as more numbers. So with two bits, you can represent four numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. 
But what happens when you have 3 bits? Well, same trend, you can now represent even more numbers. There are now 8 total states and your computer will assign a numerical value to each of them and you will now be able to count up to 7 from 0. And this exponential trend will continue for as many bits as we want to add with the number of possible states that can be represented doubling for each successive bit. Which basically means that the number of, well, numbers that we can represent with x amount of bits can be calculated by plugging into 2 to the power of x, base 2 because a single bit has two possible states, and exponential x because every bit you add will double the number of states you had prior. So if you had something like 15 bits put together, you could represent 32,768 numbers, 2 to the power of 15, which would allow your computer to count up to 32,767 since we still have to include that 0 at the beginning. And if that entire part was confusing to you, don't worry about it. All you have to take away from it is the fact that putting bits together allows computers to count to ridiculously large numbers. In fact, just having 40 bits put together, 2 to the power of 40, allows a computer to count up to 1 trillion, and that's only 40 bits. 40 tiny little devices. So now, and I promise we're getting to flop soon, you might be wondering, why does it matter that they can count that high? Well, because when you can count, that also means you can do math. There's nothing stopping a computer from looking at two sets of combined bits and say adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing them, then spitting out another set of combined bits that contains the answer. And boy, does this unlock the ability to do some pretty crazy things with just bits, because when you can do math in a given medium, even if it's just with zeros and ones, the sky becomes the limit. And you could see this today in your everyday life. If you say want to save a picture of a dog that has 2 million pixels in it, your computer will simply assign a set of bits to each and every single pixel and another value of a particular set of bits that will tell your computer which color belongs in that pixel. And when you put it all together, boom, you get a dog picture. And the same concept could be applied to, I don't know, say shooting a gun in a video game. There could be a combination of bits assigned to your character's position, rotation, gun angle, and ammo count. And if all these things check out, when you pull the trigger, your computer will literally do the math and crunch all the bits together in whatever ways it needs to, to mathematically figure out if you actually hit something. And all of this happens in the blink of an eye. Computers quite literally do math in the same way we do, just using solely zeros and ones and going way faster. They're actually pretty scary when you sit down and think about how quick they do this stuff. And for one last piece of extra context before I tell you what a flop is, because honestly I've already kind of explained it. There are 8 bits in a byte. That's what a byte is. A byte is 8 bits. So if you ever want to figure out how many bits your favorite game is working with now that you know just how complex they are, just take the game file size, let's say 80 gigabytes, and multiply that by 8. That's going to be 640 gigabits or 640 billion bits for a single game. Just imagine how much numerical information and calculations you can store in 640 billion bits. So far in this video, we've been talking on scales of 1, 2, 3, 15 bits, and it was already getting complicated. Now think about 640 billion bits for an 80 gigabyte game. Like, it's honestly just unreal and not even possible for the human mind to comprehend, so don't even try. Alright, so now that you know what bits are and how they can be combined to create even larger things like photos and even games, what the hell is a flop? And how does it involve bits? Well, surprise, surprise, I've already told you. To refresh your memory, a flop stands for floating point operation. And a floating point operation is just any type of bit math which cannot be predicted by your computer. In other words, a floating point operation is a spontaneous calculation that must be done by your computer that cannot have previously been predicted. That's why it's called a floating point operation, meaning that the decimal point as well as other numerical values for any particular bit set is floating and your computer has no idea where it's going to land before starting the calculation. And remember, bits can only be in the state of 0 or 1, but put together they can represent more complex numerals like large numbers or decimals. So just know that going forward, if I talk about numbers larger than 0 or 1 or talk about decimals, I really mean that number or decimal in its corresponding bit form. But continuing on, computers are faster but not much different than humans, because like humans, if a computer knows beforehand what values it will have to work with, it will be able to perform the corresponding calculation faster when the time comes. A good way to visualize this is to compare opening a photo on your computer versus is playing a multiplayer game on it. When you open a photo, your computer knows exactly what bits represent what pixel and what bits represent what color, and it's all packed nicely into a single file that can only be opened or closed but not changed. 
This is a static file and therefore does not contain any floating point operations. Everything that your computer needs to know to open that file is contained within the file itself and your computer doesn't have to do any calculations on its own to open it. But when you look at a multiplayer game, it's not possible for a game file to contain a bit set for every single thing and every single angle and every single possibility that could happen within that game. If that was the case, game files would be infinitely large because you would need an infinite amount of bits to represent every single possibility. To avoid this, instead your computer has to calculate a lot of that stuff on the spot as you and the other players perform said possibilities. Oh, you took a step to the right? That step wasn't stored within the game file. Your computer had to crunch existing bits within the file to figure out how that's supposed to look. Oh, you fired your gun? Your computer has to calculate what's supposed to happen. Oh, you threw a grenade? Your computer has to calculate where it lands. So therefore, the file for a multiplayer game would be dynamic, meaning that it is able to be changed while open and therefore involves floating point operations. And remember, floating point operations are just random bit operations that your computer could not have previously predicted before performing them. Because your computer could not have predicted that you would jump out of a building at this exact moment in time, out of this exact window, activate your parachute here, and turn around to look at a building spontaneously collapse. That's just ridiculous. So now you know what a flop is, it's just a random bit operation that could not have previously been predicted. And since you know what a flop is, we can now look at let's say the Xbox Series X's 12 teraflops of performance and simply rewrite it as 12 trillion random bit operations per second. And the same thing goes for the PS5, we can rewrite it as 10.3 trillion random bit operations per second. And now, since the context has been drawn, we can find the answer. Which is better, the Xbox Series X or the PS5? And do teraflops matter for in-game performance? Well, nobody knows which of the two consoles will be better until launch, and no, teraflops do not matter for in-game performance. And you might be like, oh, I knew he was a Sony fanboy. But no, I'm just being honest. While teraflops are usually a good indication as to which of two graphics cards are better, they should definitely not be taken as gospel because a lot of other things besides random processing play a huge role in graphics performance. Now, this video isn't about those other things, so I'm not going to go into depth as to what they are and what they do, but I will list off a couple of them to show you that they exist and give you a couple of examples as to how the teraflop comparison method is somewhat flawed. So other things that affect graphics performance include but are not limited to number of streaming multiprocessors, core base and boost clocks, memory interface type, memory capacity, memory speed, memory architecture, memory bandwidth, GPU architecture, GPU core clock, GPU interface, and storage speed, to name a few. Now, you don't need to understand what any of that stuff meant, but my point is, looking at teraflops as the only metric as to which GPU will perform better is like looking at a 600 horsepower semi truck and a 180 horsepower Honda Civic and automatically concluding that the semi truck goes faster without realizing that the semi truck is heavier, has more wheels, worse handling, consumes diesel, a wider frame, a slower RPM, and the list can certainly go on. Just because the semi truck is capable of outputting more power doesn't mean it's specifically engineered for the task at hand, which in this case is winning a race against this Honda Civic. And the same thing can be said of teraflops. Don't believe me? Well, let's look at Microsoft themselves. The original Xbox One had a GPU capable of 1.31 teraflops and the Xbox Series X a GPU capable of 12 teraflops. By that metric, the Xbox Series X should be around 9 times faster than the original Xbox One. But it's not. Microsoft themselves even say that the Xbox Xbox Series X will be able to manage around 120 FPS at 1080p for most games, which puts it around 2-3 to three times as powerful as the Xbox One X and about 6 times as powerful as the OG Xbox One. Meaning that teraflops have failed us here for an accurate comparison. Another example would be my PC rig. Currently my PC's graphics card is the Nvidia RTX 2080 Ti, which is rated for about 14.2 teraflops of peak compute power. Which means that by going off of random processing capability alone, my GPU should only be around 18% faster than the Xbox Series X. And spoiler alert for those of you guys who aren't PC players, the RTX 2080 Ti is currently the most powerful graphics card a consumer could buy that is intended for gaming. The RTX 2080 Ti can manage a smooth 50 plus FPS in most games at high settings at 8K. No, not 4K, I'm talking 50 plus FPS at 8K. Pure 8K, not upscaled. Not to mention the over 240 FPS average it usually gets at 1080p. And how much does the card retail for you ask? Yeah, try $1,199.99 for just the graphics card. So off the top of my head, I think it's pretty safe to say that the Xbox Series X won't even be half as powerful as the RTX 2080 Ti, let alone come within 20% of it because of its teraflop count. So the final conclusion? 
The goal of this video was to fully educate you on what teraflops are, just so I could prove why they aren't everything, and I hope I managed to do that. As a refresher, one teraflop equals one trillion random bit operations per second, and a random bit operation is something that your graphics card could not have previously predicted, like all the mechanics that go into you throwing a grenade for example. So while the flop measurement is important and can provide us insight as to how powerful consoles might be, in recent years it's kind of become more of a marketing tactic and should really be taken with a grain of salt. So basically, while teraflops are important and can sometimes be used as a decent metric, they aren't everything. So it's a bit too early to crown a console king just yet. So final verdict? No winners. Just wait till launch and stop trolling each other over the internet. But anyways guys, this video has been long and complex enough. Let me know down below in the comments if I managed to do a decent job breaking everything down or if I just sucked at explaining this time around. And be sure to give me some video suggestions down below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I've been Innocence, you've been the audience, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.